Well, we can absolutely use dietary approaches to treat cognitive decline in a lot of cases. So you're probably aware, BNS, that we now call dementia type 3 diabetes. And there's insulin resistance in the brain. So what does insulin resistance mean? So we said earlier, insulin resistance means insulin doesn't work properly. So if there's some parts of your brain that need insulin to take up glucose, then what happens if the insulin's not working properly? It means there's some parts of the brain that aren't able to take up glucose or sugar normally. In that situation, those brain cells are starved. They don't get the energy they need, so they're not going to work properly. That leads to cognitive dysfunction. So how do you deal with that? Well, is there a source of fuel to the brain, what we call a substrate, that doesn't require insulin? It's called a ketone. So if you go on to uh, change your metabolism from burning carbohydrates to burning fat, when you burn fat, you can produce ketones, and these ketones can cross into the brain and provide brain cells. Even if they're insulin resistant, they can provide the brain cells with a source of energy. So in that case, we often see when we give people ketone drinks or something like that, they'll have a, a, an episode of lucidity. I just had a patient today who was telling me about her father who in the nursing home, she couldn't control his food at all. But whenever she went, she'd give him some uh, medium chain triglycerides, well, caprylic acid, a uh, medium chain triglyceride oil. And she said while, while she was there, there would be a, a short period where he would come alive after she gave him that. And it would only be a relatively short effect and then it would wear off after half an hour or thereabouts. Um, but it, it's really telling that uh, we can actually improve cognitive function in an insulin resistant brain. And remember, type 3 diabetes is dementia. And I guess uh, if you're interested, I've actually got a lecture provocatively titled, Are You Smarter Than a Doctor? And I do talk a little bit about some of the stuff on dementia there. And I've got some longer lectures on dementia. But the other thing is, is that dementia is often caused by bad diet. It is a metabolic disease. The brain is only 2% of the body's weight, but it uses 20% of the body's energy. So what that means is it's incredibly active energetically, metabolically active. So if there was any organ in the body that was going to be susceptible to a metabolic disease, it was going to be the brain. And it is. It absolutely is. Uh, I'll give you an example. We talk about uh, this uh, Alzheimer's gene. I'm not sure if you've heard of it, APOE4. And a lot of people are saying, oh, I'm going to get my APOE4 checked because I want to see if I'm going to get dementia or not. And it's often stated, um, a slight exaggeration, that if you have two of these APOE4 genes, one from mum, one from dad, then you're chances of developing Alzheimer's disease are increased by about 20 times. Now, it's not quite that high. It's probably actually lower than 10, but it still is a significant increase. So then the question comes on, well, is that truly an increase of that much in everybody, or is it only in those people who have metabolic ill health? And there was this really elegant study where they took a population from Nigeria. Um, they looked at a city in Nigeria and they looked at an ethnically identical city in Indianapolis in the United States um, because these two cities were historically connected by the slave trade. So they actually had the same DNA. And this population of ethnic Nigerians actually had the highest carriage rate of APOE4 in any population in the world. And then they said, well, if it's truly just a genetic thing, then they should be the same level of increased risk of Alzheimer's disease in the Americans and in the Nigerians. Now, I don't need to tell you that the state of metabolic health in America, with the average American, only 12% of Americans not having, you know, at least one problem with one of the symptoms of metabolic syndrome, is atrocious. And that's what this study reflected. The rate of dementia in the American population was two and a half times greater than the genetically identical Nigerian population. And there's reasons why the APOE4 genetics is much more susceptible 
to damage through metabolic health. And I go through that in my lecture, but needless to say, good metabolic health protects against dementia. The brain is incredibly metabolically active. So if you have a metabolic disease, the brain is a sitting duck. 